sometime today, the majority leader will file cloture on the motion to proceed to the defense authorization bill, setting up a vote for next week on this important legislation. Under ordinary circumstances, this would be a straightforward, non-controversial vote that could unite the two parties on a matter related to our common defense. But not this year. This year, Democrats would rather use this bill to manufacture controversy. Worse still, in their determination to meet their own campaign promises ahead of the upcoming election, Democrats have decided to put their own political interests ahead of the collective judgment of our military service chiefs, who are still in the midst of a study about whether Don't Ask, Don't Tell can be repealed without hurting combat readiness. But this really shouldn't surprise anyone. For nearly two years now, Democrats have done their own thing. Americans have been asking Democrats for nearly two years to focus on the economy and jobs, and what they've gotten instead is one costly government-driven plan after another that kills jobs and hurts the economy. And when it comes to matters of national defense, Democrats in Washington have established a clear pattern of making political decisions first and then analyzing the problem later. Whether it was the decision to close Gitmo before figuring out what to do with the terrorists who were housed there, and to deny our intelligence community the ability to interrogate terrorists, an artificial timeline for withdrawal in Afghanistan, or this latest decision to use a legal, <clears throat> to use a defense authorization bill to move ahead with repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell before hearing back from the service chiefs, Democrats have shot first and asked questions later. In other words, they put their own ideological goals ahead of everything else. So I would just remind my colleagues that we're fighting two wars, that our volunteer force doesn't ask for much. They ask that they be well-trained, well-equipped, that their families be cared for, and that we meet their selfless sacrifice with dignity and respect. This bill should be an easy one. We should be united and give our troops a responsible defense policy they need. And then the defense appropriations bill they need, without strings, without games, and save the politics for the campaign trail. Another bill the Democrats have made needlessly political is the small business bill, which we'll also be voting on later today. Senator Hatch has offered a measure that would fully extend the R&D tax credit, an amendment Democrats blocked just before the August recess, but which the President now appears to support. We'll also have a chance to extend the biodiesel tax credit through the Grassley Amendment. This credit is essential to keeping producers competitive, but because of the majority's partisan tactics, this credit has expired. So it's my hope that our friends on the other side will now join the President and the Republicans in supporting these two important pieces of job-creating legislation. Unfortunately, the Democrats' whole game plan over the past year and a half and through today is to tick as many items as possible off the liberal wish list while they still have a chance. Well, the American people think our friends on the other side should have spent a little more time worrying about 10 percent unemployment than on legislative sideshows. So if some if Senate Democrats really want to do something for the private sector jobs in this country, they should support Senator Hatch's bipartisan R&D tax credit and Senator Grassley's biodiesel tax credit and then work with Republicans after that on preventing the looming trillion-dollar tax hike that Democratic leaders have so far ignored. It's time our friends on the other side got serious about jobs and the economy. It's time they put the liberal wish list on the shelf and focused on the priorities of the American people.